Do you want to learn how to make a custom motion background in DaVinci Resolve? Stick around and I'll show you how to do this in a few quick steps. Here we're going to use some simple little tools in DaVinci that you can use for your background and tweak it to however you want it. First we're going to go into the Fusion page and create a new Fusion composition. And with that composition being made, we're just going to create the default. We're going to double click that and it just brings up a media out. The best way to just put a background in here is to grab the background node and just drag it down and connect it to your media out. With that, that just creates a black background. You can go over here and you can change the background to whatever color that you want. It to be. We're just going to change it to a blue so it's now a solid blue background. You can change the type that you want to horizontal, vertical, four corner, or gradient. We're going to do four corner because that will give you four different colors that you can actually add in to your background. Once you get your colors that you want selected over here, we are going to then add a fast noise. With the fast noise, we're going to take the output and take it to the output of the background that will create our merge node. In the fast noise, we're going to then do some changing to make the background stand out and fine tune it. We can change the detail. Now it looks more like smoke, but we're not going to go for that effect right now. If you take it all the way to the left, it will just blend in a lot more. From there, you can just play with the contrast or whatever it is that you want or the brightness, dial it down some. You can also change the seeth rate, which is how it morphs into different colors. Or you can just change the seeth rate, which will give you the rate that it's changing. So if you play this, you will see that it's changing. You can change the rate, bring it down and it hardly changes. If you want it to change more, you can just move it up. So the higher you go, the faster it's going to change. From here, we're going to still want to fine tune this a little bit better. So we're going to go into the merge node. And within the merge node, we're going to go over to the blend and we're going to drop this all the way down. We're going to then bring it back up slowly until you can actually see just a little bit of an outline of the different colors. This is going to be your preference of how you want it. We're just going to leave it here for now and you can see the results in a little bit as we play this. Once you have this set you can go right on back over to your edit page and in your edit page just drop your fusion composition down on the timeline and you can adjust this to the length that you want no matter what it is because it's going to play the same thing and repeat over and over. From there we're just going to go into the effects and just drop a regular text down on top of that. We're then from there going to just input the text that we want and we're going to change our font to how you want it and change color size we're going to add a simple little drop shadow to our lettering so we're going to go down to drop shadow and just change and add a drop shadow that will just complement this a little bit and just bring it up and adjust it very slightly to how you want it we're just going to leave it at this for now and that's just a simple text and drop shadow if you play this you will see that there is motion in the background very very subtle you can change that anytime you want in the fusion page now we're going to just add more to our background. So we're going to go back over to our fusion node. And once we're back in the fusion node, we're going to then at that point, we're going to add some shape to this background. So control space and bring up shape. There you can look at all these different shapes that you have in the fusion and they will be pre-made. So we're just going to go with S star and with that on there we can then change and add this to the number one viewer and change our viewer selection up here to one. You can see now that we have a star. So we can change the number of points that you want from a lot down to one. We're going to go with a five star. You can change the depth of the star to how you want it. We're just going to go with it about there. Going to change the width and the height. That changes basically the size. We're going to go with say 0 0.2, 0 0.2. That will give us the size of the star that we want for now. Now that we have our star done, we're just going to go over here and add an S render to this. And once that's added, we're going to then connect that to our merge 
output and that will create another merge and now you have a star that is on top of your background now we just have one single star but we're going to want to have more than that so we're going to go in here and just look for another thing called a star a grid the grid will allow us to have more stars in the background right here you can see that we have a grid of three by three so if you click this and make this a six by six that will fill up the whole screen with stars since these are procedural we'll be able to go over like to the star again and then we can change any of the factors that you want and they will affect all of the stars in that whole section since we're putting this on a background we're going to want whatever it is that we have in the foreground to be taking precedence. So we're going to actually dim the background some. We're going to go over to our merge node and in the merge node we're going to then blend and drop it down to where you don't see it and bring it back up until it's barely visible. The less visibility it is the less predominant it is therefore your title or image in front of the background will take precedence. Now that we have what it is that you want we're going to want to add some motion to the stars since this is a motion background we're going to go and highlight the star and in the angle you can make a keyframe from zero to the end however it is that you want and once you make the keyframe it will be rotating better way to do it is to make a expression an expression is like a formula so make the expression and put equal time in there enter now as you play this you will see that the stars will automatically turn and they will do that continuously for however long the, the clip is now, for any reason that you want, you can change the star from being a solid because the solid is going to give you a little bit of distraction for your foreground. So take the solid off and then change your border width up a little bit until you get to where it is that you want it. So we're just going to leave ours right there for now and then play that and you will see that you have hollow stars now rotating with this there is a lot that you can do you can make stars you can make polygons anything you see in the s shape category within fusion you can add that in place of the stars it's a good way of trying so remember anything that you do here will be transferred over to the title page and once in the edit page you will then be able to play this as you see it. If you want to learn more about procedural editing and stuff like that in Fusion, let me know in the comments and I will be happy to build another tutorial with procedural techniques. Thanks and have a good day.